Hello students, myself, Dr. Divya Gildiyal, in continuation with my lecture on interference. In the previous lecture, I told you about the path difference between two rays when they are upon a uniform thickness, thin film, two mu t cos r plus lambda by two. We discussed the case of reflected light. Now, what happens in transmitted light? Have a look at this ray diagram. And remember, whatever I told you step by step for reflected light, that very same similar pattern will be followed in transmitted light, but we will not consider Stokes law for transmitted light because Stokes law is considered only for reflected light. Secondly, whatever maxima minima conditions you will be getting here, complementary to that you will be getting in the transmitted case. Now let us first look at the ray diagram. Look at this ray diagram. A, B is your incident light, thin film of thickness T, and part of it is partially reflected along BC, part of it is refracted along BD, and this medium not being opaque, part of it gets transmitted out via DR. Similarly, part of it from this point D gets reflected and then out here it is transmitted and part of it from here gets back reflected into the surface and it is transmitted out. So what happens it? In this case, we get the fringe pattern here. Whatever maxima minima conditions we will be getting in transmitted will be complementary of what we got in the reflected case. And the step-by-step -step derivation is exactly similar to what we did in reflected light. Let us begin. Now we are going to find a formula for path difference between rays in transmitted light. Taking a thin film of thickness T and refractive index mu, let A B be the in monochromatic light of wavelength lambda incident at an angle I. Ray after refraction at B follows the path BD at D. It is partly reflected along DE and partly refracted along DR. At point E, the ray is partly reflected along EM and it is then refracted along MS. Path difference between DR and MS, the transmitted rays, is equal to path traveled in the medium because of which I will take mu and path traveled in air where I will not take mu. So path D E M minus path D H in air. What do we get? Mu into D E plus E M minus D H, the perpendicular that has been dropped. Like similarly we did in Young's double slit, we did in reflected light. It is actually, this is a perpendicular that has been dropped on DR. And this DH is what exactly we are working out on. So it becomes DE is EM, congruent triangles. DE is equal to EM because they are two congruent triangles. Similar sides, similar angles, hence DE becomes equal to EM. So 2 mu DE minus DH. In right angled triangle, DEQ, DEQ, this is a right angled triangle, we get formula for cos theta is base upon hypotenuse. So EQ upon D cos theta DE. So DE is EQ upon cos R. EQ is thickness of the thin film. Look here. EQ is thickness of this thin film T. This is a uniform th thickness film. So everywhere it will obviously be T. So we get DQ equal to T tan R. 
putting all these values in my expression above for path difference becomes equal to 2 t tan r sin i. So path difference. Now, instead of tan r, I can put sin theta upon cos theta. The path difference 2 mu t cos r minus 2 t tan r sin i instead of tan, put sin r upon cos r and multiply and divide this by sin r. So you get 2 mu t cos r minus 2 mu t cos r into sin square r. Take out 2 mu t cos r common into 1 minus sin square r. There is a formula sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1. So 1 minus sin square theta becomes equal to cos square theta. So path difference becomes equal to 2 mu t cos r. We will not take Stokes law in this case. Once again, condition for maxima is an even multiple of path difference and for destructive interference 2n plus minus 1 lambda by 2 for n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and n equal to 1, 2, 3. We get the conditions for maxima and minima. Now, a very in this, in your AKTU paper, 10 mark question in section C is asked for derive an expression for path difference due to thin film of uniform thickness in reflected light. This is, comes as a 10 mark question. What is asked in section A? Section A, a very favorite question is, why do, do we see colors in thin film? Now, you remember one thing in section A, once they had even asked, why do you see a particular color in a fringe pattern and you don't see a particular color? The answer for it is that when the condition of maxima is satisfied, it will appear bright. And when the condition of minima is satisfied, it will appear dark. So white light we know consists of seven colors. You remember prism? where it splits the colors in uh, white light into seven colors. So for a particular value of thickness of the thin film and the angle, only certain wavelengths will satisfy the condition of maxima. And that is why we will only see those colors that satisfy the condition of maxima. Hence, only these colors will be present in the reflected light and the film will appear colored. Another very favorite question of section A is, why is an extended source of light necessary in fringe pattern? Necessity of extended source of light. See, look at this ray diagram here. See, for each incident ray, we get a set of interfering rays. See, this is a point source S, right? And what is happening? Look at it. It is once again the same ray diagram we are seeing for thin film interference. This point source S is making light incident on this thin film. And after multiple reflections and all, it is in entering the human eye and you are getting a fringe pattern. But my source of light here is limited. It is a point source. And it is not covering the full thin film. So what happens is instead of this point source, if I use an extended source of light, my whole thin film will get covered and I will see a lovely pattern, full pattern on the uh, screen. See, if light from an extended source is incident on the thin film, then the incident rays from the same part of extended source are reflected from the different parts of the film and they enter the eye. And they enter the eye. So we get extended source is necessary for observing the whole film simultaneously by the human eye. These two questions come in section A. Colors of thin film and why? as uh, this necessity of an extended source. So this is a section A question. You can see wedge-shaped thin film. 
Now, this question has been asked often on in section C. Before I begin with wedge shape, I will tell you certain mathematical concepts you should be knowing before you start the derivation of an expression for path difference due to wedge shape thin film. So that I will do in my next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.